right, there's a lorry. That's it. Oh, there it goes. That's it. Now I'm going to get stuck behind that. When well, there are 300 tr cars that are behind it. Colwyn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Colwyn. That's his name. Lord Tony Colwyn. Call me Tony. You see? Call him Tony. Forget his last name. Oh dear. Another nice chap. Very, very pro BDA. You know, come what may. Very sort of establishment figure. But probably uh, the most active, I would say. Part time dentist, obviously. Probably not so much now. Again, wrong end of his career. There are no dentists really going into politics and not likely to be, I don't think. And I think there was one in Scotland, but you know, he was like, he was the son of an MP who just happened to send him to dental school while he was waiting for his dad to retire. And now he's, uh, now he's sort of taken over as an MP from his dad. I don't think he's, he's, he's not sort of, he's not a dentist that really got interested in politics and decided to stand. Lip sync issues. I think we've finally managed to get to the bottom of the lip sync issues. It's because the phone is is trying to do too much, you know, and <clears throat> recording video, which I think is 4K video, although it gets downscaled, obviously, when, because this is, I record this in up and down format, and then when it goes out on YouTube, it has to be in side to side format. So uh, what you're watching is just a letterbox of the whole picture, you know, I mean, actually the actual picture there's tons up there and then there's actually quite a lot down there as well but uh, what's up there is boring and what's down there is embarrassing so uh, so I'll just sort of do the letterbox thing but no you know my children could be dying in a flaming fireball and I wouldn't know but at least you have got lips no lip sync problems okay, so that's all right then isn't it airplane mode that was the that was the key so yeah, so Tony Colwyn, yeah, I mean, as I say, nice bloke, but no, nobody, uh, so we've got a governance problem, that was it, but I'm not going to go over that all that again, because we did all that yesterday, didn't we? I was going to tell you what the <clears throat> ideal dental system is, and I sort of got sidetracked <clears throat> telling you what a bunch of idiots we're being run by, although, I mean, you could say those of us in the private sector are sort of to, to a large extent are not run so much you know you tend to get tortured more in the National Health Service than you do in the private sector although you don't earn any more as you know I was, I was on the radio station now radio is a good way of marketing I was the radio Kent dentist for a long time we never really got any patients from it I must say so but it was uh, I don't know having said that it was a good way of marketing obviously that's how I define marketing is how much uh, you bring in, you know, in excess of what you've spent. I must do, I must do a, a, a thing on uh, marketing, because uh, marketing is uh, something where it actually it's possible to spend a lot of money uh, doing it wrong, you know. It's a painful experience getting marketing wrong, and knowing from someone who has been through that pain, <laughs> spent the money, and uh, knows what works and what doesn't, is would be probably quite helpful to anybody who's running a dental practice angry angry you're saying come on it's, it's the, the secret you know the, 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 the secret okay okay here it is okay here it is okay right come here come here come here if you remember one thing from these videos one thing this is what you need to remember okay because this is the this is the clue the secret the elixir the magic formula for solving how to provide public sector dentistry, public and private sector dentistry. And it's a thing called shared savings, okay? It's a shared savings. Now, let me just take you, I'll give you a little bit of history, okay? Before this ridiculous universal dumb ass system that we got at the moment came in, dentists used to get paid fee per item. And what happened was every year we would spend X amount of money. Let's say hundred thousand pounds. Hundred thousand pounds it costs to run a surgery, and then if you could do it for less, then you got to keep the difference. And the uh, Department of Health would look at the cost of running the surgery based on the number of fillings that you declared that you'd done and everything, 
and they would say, okay, look, on average, everybody took took uh, uh, spent ninety five thousand pounds on running the surgery. So next year we're going to set the cost to ninety five thousand. So that was that's like a sort of shared savings, but it's more like a ratchet. You know, it's ratcheting the cost down. It, sometimes it ratcheted the cost up, but it almost always ratcheted the cost down because people's natural inclination is to try and beat the system, isn't it? Spend slightly less, take home slightly more than everyone else. So we were in a race, really, to sort of try and beat, beat what was regarded uh, as the, you know, the, the fair earnings for the year. Now, <clears throat> just imagine a slight variation on that. I mean, the, the problem with the old system was that obviously it had a downward pressure on uh, quality because uh, everyone was competing to do everything in as cheaply as possible and as quickly as possible and using the cheapest laboratories and materials as possible. And that was, I think it was bad. I mean, it made for tremendous sort of so-called efficiency because, you know, you could have a filling on the Monday and you could have it done in five minutes. And if it fell out, you could have it done again on Thursday <laughs> in another five minutes. And some people thought that sort of system was brilliant. Uh, not the ones who wanted to keep their teeth, but just the people who liked a lot of uh, busy work, you know, busyness. So imagine a slight variation on that system where the government says to dentists, look, you know, we estimate your surgery is going to cost £100,000 to operate this year, so we're going to give you £100,000. And then at the end of the year, the dentist goes back to the Department of Health and the Department of Health says, look, you know, we've had a look at your activity and we have decided that um, it only cost you uh, £90,000 to run the surgery. And the dentist says, that's right, our trousers are 10 because uh, first of all, I'm uh, now. Now, first of all, now let me say to you, right? And I should have really said this right at the beginning, right? That if 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 you were working in the Department of Health and you gave a dentist a hundred thousand pounds to run his surgery, and at the end of the year you found out that he had actually only spent ninety thousand pounds of that on his surgery and he had trousers ten, would you call the special fraud office? You probably would, wouldn't you? You'd say, look, this guy is is trousering money out of the National Health Service. You know, money that was given to him for the care of patients. Uh, you know, let's get the police involved, let's get the courts involved. This guy's obviously a fraudster and a bit of a con man. Now, you see, having set the scene like that, right, you can understand why the, this, the system that I'm gonna to describe to you has had problems getting off the ground. Because the idea that you can trouser some of the NHS budget, uh, providing that you can sort of squirrel it away and save it, is, is anathema to the Department of Health. They do not like this. This is fraud in their opinion. And so this is why this system is, is a difficult system to, to sell to anyone who's, you know, not, treats the NHS as a religion, which a lot of people do. But just to, so put that in the back of your mind, because I'll come back to that in a minute, right? But okay, so we've got a thousand, we've got ten, hundred thousand pounds to run our surgery, and what we've done because we are a brilliant, brilliant preventive dentist, okay, and we have managed to prevent a ton of disease. So a load of fillings that we might have done didn't need doing because we've been doing a lot of dietary advice, and a ton of scaling and polishing and uh, treating periodontal treatment that we might have needed to do didn't need doing because we, we're absolutely brilliant on the plaque control and giving out disclosing tablets and handing away into space brushes and all sorts of stuff so we've got a disgustingly healthy client base and as a result our expenses are coming in way low way under what the Department of Health estimate based on their old you know shut the stable door after the horse has bolted type system should cost um, and so what we do, obviously, we trouser it, don't we? Like we did in the old days. <laughs> so, but this this is the twist, okay? What happens is Department of Health says, okay, we know you've trousered 10 grand, right? But we're going to split it with you. We actually do. We think you've done a good job. You've brought in your service under budget. We like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're, we're, we're going to ask for five grand back and we'll, you can keep five out of the NHS budget and you can keep five in consideration of saving 10, right? You're gonna get 50% of the save. Now you might say that's bloody outrageous. I, I saved 100% of it. Why should I only give them 50? And the answer is that you're not gonna get away with keeping it all, okay? You, you, 
you know, because that's the ratchet, isn't it? The ratchet, when you keep it all, you, you get ratcheted. Under this new system, you share it, and that's why it's called shared savings. You, you make some savings, and you share it with the commissioner, and you share it with yourself. And this is a system, it does work, you know, it works in the railways. You know, if the railway franchisees are given an indicative budget, and if they spend less, then they don't get all that money taken away. And this is a sort of the culture in uh, government, is that if somebody doesn't spend up to their budget, they get it taken away. Uh, on the basis that they obviously don't need it. You know, why give them more money than they need? You know, to go on foreign holidays or whatever, or, or just uh, put their own wages up. Why, why should we pay people who save money more on the National Health Service? Why should we pay people who are like really, really good at prevention and cutting costs? Why should they be paid any more than the people who are useless and uh, don't, you know, and just know how to write checks and nothing else? And this is the problem, this is why the NHS is costing, costs so much. It's because they uh, reward spending up to the budget and it's, it's well known in, in all, and not just the health service, in public sector that uh, you spend up to your budget. You don't, uh, you don't declare a penny under budget at the end of the year, otherwise you might not get it next year. In fact, if anything, what you do is you spend up and a bit over your budget and then you put in a, a, an increase, don't you? You say, no, I want a blooming uh, bit more next year because unfortunately we went over the top. Well, the, the, way, the way that this system works, the shared savings approach, is great because the, the next year what happens is you have got £95,000 then to... Uh, to uh, hello, someone's broken down. You've got ninety-five thousand pounds, haven't you, to run the practice? And then, but then, what happens is uh, it, you take eighty-five thousand pounds to run it because you're in second year of your preventive scheme, and more and more people are are uh, healthy. Sorry, I'm just going to make sure I don't bump into anyone because I'm pulling out around a car that's broken down on a roundabout, and I'm turning left. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, so next year you've spent 95 and, uh, <coughs> or you've been given 95 and you've spent 85. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> and then, uh, and you come in under budget again, perhaps not by 10 grand, perhaps by 7 grand or 8 grand or something like that. And, um, and you share it again and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. You're doing a lot of really good dentistry, you're uh, trousering money to reward you for making the savings and the commissioner is uh, coming in spending less on his dentistry budget every year think about that as a commissioner okay if you're listening so you're spending less on your dentistry budget every year by because you've got the workforce working for you instead of against you anyway that's that's the way it works and that's the way it would work and what it does is it gives the gives the workforce, you know, the dentists, the, the practice owners, the principals, uh, an incentive to run the service efficiently and uh, it, uh, it lines up all the levers, you know, so that uh, they've got a stake in it. The dentists become stakeholders in the system again. Whereas um, under the present system of, you know, units of uh, dental inactivity, the the dentists are not really stakeholders, they're just budget holders, you know, they're, they're not really interested in. Uh, they've been sort of NHSized like everyone else, they've just given a budget and told this is your budget and you've got to spend it. And dentistry, like, and I think this is another thing that most people don't realise about healthcare, is they have to stay within budget, okay? If I, if I start a charity, um, if I start a charity, <laughs> So look after the needy people of Ramsgate High Street, okay? And believe me, that's every single person in Ramsgate High Street. And I get some voluntary workers and I say to them, look, I've managed to raise with my charities, managed to raise a hundred pounds. Go out and do the good the, the good work, spread the good word, do do whatever, you know, do what you can for these people. Here's a hundred quid. And then supposing they come back at the end of the week, how did it go? Oh, Oh, I went really well. We did tons of stuff, you know, I mean, we've done really well, but there's only one slight problem, one snag. We've spent 150 pounds. All right, <laughs> but it can't work like that. It can't work like that, okay? It cannot work like that. 
you have to spend a hundred pounds this is what these hospitals and trusts and that don't realize okay yeah yeah there's demand okay some people are going to get le left unvisited some people will be left untreated some people will probably die but you have to stay within the budget if you've got a budget of x pounds to do y then x pounds is what you must spend okay and not say oh actually y needs 2x y does not equal 2x in this equation y equals x so and if you're um, a self-employed dentist working in general practice you know this you know this you know you cannot go to your bank at the end of the year and say yeah uh, you know I had to I had to pay myself something and uh, unfortunately the surgery made a hundred thousand pound loss you know but who cares <laughs> you'll soon find out who cares all right a lot of people care <laughs> in the private sector nobody seems to care in the public sector so you have to you have to just spend up to your budget and do what you can and then and I think <clears throat> there are there is so much potential to do more within the same because that that will be the sort of that's the idea isn't it is to have the same amount of money make the same amount of money go further and the shared savings approach is designed to do that you know you say you start off with hundred thousand pounds next year your budget's 95 the year after that it's 92 the year after that it's 89 you know and and yet you are uh, you're doing more in that you're improving people's oral health you're rewarding the dentist for prevention um, and you're uh, you're doing you're cutting the, the NHS public finances for the first time ever or or do you just look at that and say this guy is trousering the NHS budget this NHS budget is not designed to uh, supplement the wages of the staff it is designed uh, and dedicated to patient care and therefore if there's so much as a penny left over out of the NHS budget at the end of the year then we want that back to put towards dying babies or something you know it's all about your, the, the big picture isn't it your vision you know have you got the vision thing can you see how it might work out differently and better anyway I mean, I welcome feedback on this. You know, let me know if you think that there's a flaw in the shared savings approach. Then, then by all means. But I mean, I'm. It's very much the sort of the den plan approach. You know, the DPS, DPAS, DPAS approach, the practice plan. None of these firms exist anymore. They've all been bought up. They're, they're by by global conglomerates, health insurance and conglomerates. But um, you know, that that was what made them successful. Not the sort of the bastardized hybridized you know uh, pay us a tiny amount every month and we'll do a free checkup and give you 10% off your treatment type plans but the fully funded third party full capitation where the patient pays a flat rate every month and the risk of the patient needing treatment is effectively shouldered by the dentist you know anything that goes wrong comes out of the dentist's pocket and the converse of that, the other side of that coin, was that anything that the patient didn't need d doing went into the dentist's pocket. We like that, don't we? We like that. So, you know, you keep your patients healthy by uh, and earn a lot of money. Or put it the other way around, you make a lot of money by keeping your patients healthy on these hybrid plans. And they have demonstrated, at least in the private sector, that this principle can work. You know, for keeping patients healthy, uh, makes you rich um, and and cuts the budget <laughs> you know and can be done for less than uh, than previously you're right you're welcome right okay well look I think I've just about exhausted that topic I can see I can see my work in the distance there now so I'm not gonna blather on about uh, nothing until I get to work so anyway I, it's quite sort of fitting in a way that the most important revelation that I've picked up in my 35 years in general practice has actually taken less than 19 minutes it's taken less than the normal time it, it takes me to make the video and I do apologize to Andy Colwyn and I'm so, I'm glad we got the lip and sync what's it sorted out well hopefully and um, I'm gonna be at work in two minutes and so and so should you be too so I'll uh, talk to you next time all right bye